to the Vernon uh, AgriLife Research and Extension Center. Uh, I'm Darius Malinowski, I'm plant physiologist and uh, forage agronomist. But today we'll be talking about a different type of project about uh, breeding winter hardy hibiscuses. This project was initiated about uh, four years ago as a private hobby of mine and two of my colleagues, uh, Dr. William Pinchak and uh, Steve Brown from the Foundation Seed. And uh, starting last year, uh, this project became an official part of the strategic plan of our station. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, the objectives of the project and examples of what we are breeding for. One objective of the breeding program of winter hardy hibiscus is to create uh, lines of future cultivars with a range of colors. Uh, presently, uh, cultivars, commercial cultivars, are uh, commonly basically in three colors, white, uh, red and pink. We uh, have created so far many more colors like lavender or uh, mauve or, or uh, different shades of uh, fuchsia and uh, pinks and uh, we'll see them later on. But as an example, this is a flower with a very dark red color uh, which we are looking to, uh, to, to achieve. Um, we want to have a very dark, almost burgundy colors and we have several flowers already in this color too. Another example would be a lavender type of flower, of color. Uh, this is this plant, as you can see, uh, it has good traits, it's a lot of big uh, flowers, uh, big petals, white petals, and very nice uh, lavender color. And another example would be typical white uh, colored uh, hibiscus. Uh, that may not be very interesting at this point, but it has other traits that could be easily transferred to other uh, cultivars. And then the color also could be changed. This one is an example of a very unique color. We call it uh, plum. Uh, very unique, very rare in hibiscus. Another objective of the uh, breeding program is to create flowers with extreme uh, diameter or big flowers. Uh, our goal is to have at least 11 to 12 inches uh, in diameter flowers and this is an example this white flower it's about 10 inches long at least uh, white at least in diameter uh, one of our largest flowers uh, it's white but it, the color can be very easily changed and we'll see this uh, on the next example this is another example of how we can manipulate color and still uh, maintain the large flowers this flower is about 11 to 12 inches in diameter but it's very dark red, very nicely textured, and uh, very, very high value for the next breeding uh, step of this. Plant. In this example, we're trying to combine both uh, the trait of a large flower, nicely textured, and also uh, dual colors. And in this case, you can see that this flower is not white, not red. It's a white with uh, reddish uh, veins and uh, a little bit uh, pinkish tint to the whole uh, area. And it's also a very uh, important value for the next uh, step of the breeding program to create dual color flowers. One of the uh, hibiscus uh, species that we use in the breeding program is a Texas native called Texas star hibiscus. Uh, the value of this uh, particular species is a uh, very different shape of flower and very different position of pollen uh, on the stigma. Uh, they are located on the top of the stigma and uh, this gives the flower a very, very tropical look. Uh, we have uh, successfully incorporated this trait to several uh, of the breeding lines and as you can see those uh, offsprings they always will be similar to the Texas star hibiscus but with the much larger petals, much bigger flowers. The objective of the breeding program is to create uh, cultivars with dark leaves. In this example we have one plant that is, has maroon leaves very, very dark, almost brown in color. Um, such plants do not exist, such cultivars do not exist yet on the market. How it was created, it, uh, we had several uh, uh, hybrids uh, with darker stems, reddish stems, and within two generations, uh, by crossing them, we were able to create uh, a plant with uh, not only dark stems, but also maroon leaves. Our new objective uh, is to create red flowering hibiscus with white uh, eye, what we call it. As you can see, usually hibiscus have uh, dark red or maroon or brown uh, center eye, and very rarely they have white eye, like in this example. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to transfer the trait of the white eye into the red flower. And we'll do this by crossing both of them. 
now they are crossed and hopefully the fruit will develop and will collect seeds later on in about two months. After the pollination, the plant will develop a fruit with seeds. It takes about six to eight weeks from the time we pollinate the plants to collect mature seeds. And later on, all those seeds will be uh, planted again and we hope that in one of them, or maybe more of them, will have the trait of the red uh, flowers with white center eyes. Breeding uh, a line or new cultivar of winter hardy hibiscus takes several years, like with every other plant. We expect to have our cultivars on the market commercially available to you probably in about two to three years and about this time you may look in your garden centers for new cultivars originated in the Texas energy system.